Hey everybody, it's super great to be here again with you this morning. Today I want to talk to you about an unschooling curriculum. I mean obviously one of the beautiful things about home educating is that you can create the curriculum that totally suits your family, that works with your own learning styles and your own needs and priorities and all that kind of thing. But I thought it would be helpful to share with you my one. Okay, so here we go. I begin each day with 10 minutes of maths as I calculate the joy that I'm gonna uh, get out of my day and where I can uh, elevate the joy in our whole family's experience. 10 minutes of exercise, uh, strengthening my courage muscle because um, as unschoolers we're doing pretty brave thing. So I look for opportunities to really stand in my courage and deepen into that. I'm gonna go into all of these in greater detail. Um, 20 minutes of communication skills, so that's things like um, learning really how to uh, communicate my needs um, and generate conversation that is really connection based, um, learning to lean into conflict, seeing it as an invitation, learning to really self-regulate so that I don't overreact and stuff like that in conversation. Um, 15 minutes of writing, for me, uh, you can tell I really need this, um, but for me this takes the form of journaling and that's my self-care practice. So your self-care practice might look totally different, it might not be journaling, it might be calling a friend, but um, yeah, the invitation is strong there for 15 minutes of daily intentional self-care practice. 12 minutes of geography, um, for me this is really... Uh, looking at the landscape around me and weather patterns um, so that I can really decondition the beliefs that I have brought with me into adulthood from kind of schoolishness or the patriarch being raised in a patriarchy. Yeah, sometimes this is limiting beliefs, sometimes this is stuff that stops me um, having trust and faith in my children's learning journey. So um, for me, that is really looking around what is influencing me, looking at my inner landscape and getting to grips with that. And then 50 minutes of languages every single day. This is learning the language of my child, what makes them tick, um, how I can connect with them, making sure I'm getting on the same page as my children so that I can be the best learning facilitator possible to my kids. So I'm going to go into all of these a little bit more. As you can tell, this is an unschooling curriculum for me. <laughs> I'm so funny. <laughs> because we actually don't have a curriculum for our children. One of the joys of unschooling is that we believe that our children can learn through anything. That They are in fact learning every single minute of the day and you don't actually need to have a plan and a schedule and um, set topics for them to work through. But instead their natural interconnected way of viewing the world will allow them to navigate all of the learning that they need. So yeah, this is my curriculum. Our ability to unschool actually hinges on me bringing this stuff into my life um, somehow every single day. And you know what? This is the reason unschooling is not the lazy option. <laughs> unschooling isn't just waking up and going, oh, whatever is gonna happen today, blah, 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 or I'm all cool, cool, cool. I mean, maybe some people are naturally able to do all of this stuff, but I am gonna hazard a guess that you've, if you've been raised into adulthood in this era, um, you've possibly got quite a lot of kind of inner stuff to bring out onto the table and to investigate so that you can really be the person um, that will make room for your kids to thrive. We are raised in a control paradigm and we bring that in with us into adulthood. We kind of want to um, control our kids and it's hard to trust them and also um, we can project onto our kids as well. Like if we're not really happy deep inside, if we've got self-worth issues, which I think a lot of us have got, we end up kind of projecting that onto our kids and trying to fix them 
rather than turning inwards and, and asking what is really going on for me in my heart. Let me bring some loving attention to this, um, knowing that if I can do that, this outside stuff, this the stuff that feels like a big deal for my kids is possibly going to take a different form or just end up being a different priority. So yeah, a lot of the stuff on my curriculum list is about that self-worth stuff, about really putting myself as the grown-up into a resource state so that I am resilient and fluid and accepting, which then allows me to trust my children and see them um, as they are rather than see them as who I want them to be or who they should be or seeing them from a kind of fear-based space. When I can meet my own needs too, that allows me to meet the needs of my family in a much healthier way. This stuff means that I'm not going to end up a few years down the track being bitter because I just poured out and out and out from an empty cup. This is about me creating space so I can process my own kind of baggage and beliefs so that I'm not just naturally putting them onto my kids, which is where they end up if we're not intentional about dealing with this stuff. That's how the kind of cycle of punitiveness and cycle of self-loathing kind of carries on. And so it can be a challenge doing this stuff, but the great invitation here is to be a cycle breaker, to not pass it on to the next generation. And that is a gigantic gift. So there's like all this sort of inner work to do, but it's also very joy giving as well. And, and that's the thing, it can feel like initially like a burden, like Oh, I have to do self-care every day. <laughs> but then you kind of learn to just find a rhythm of self-care and to check in with your body, sort of do a, a little body scan and ask, what am I needing? How is this feeling for me? And bit by bit, you learn to trust yourself and you learn to trust in your decisions. And that then creates this whole energy in your home of trust and the sense that we're all gonna be okay, which is a really beautiful, tangible environment that your children will then ride on. So there's all this inner work to do, um, but as um, I once heard from Tara Breck, she speaks about the, the two wings of awareness, and one is the wing of wisdom and clarity and really seeing where the work needs to happen, like what needs to be done. So like really owning up and, and being wise and committing and dedicating to the work. But the other wing is self-compassion. So doing that whole thing in a great attitude of I'm trying my best, I am a good person, I can be gentle with myself here. I can be kind to myself here and allowing those two wings to kind of keep you afloat and kind of ride the winds of awareness. It's a really beautiful invitation there to do this work but actually do it in a real spirit of nurturing your heart and being gentle and kind to yourself. And doing, doing this stuff, doing this stuff, like doing hard things, confronting yourself, doing the right thing is naturally self-respecting. It allows you to grow and develop your self-respect. So that's confronting where you need to do work and then doing the work actually builds your self-respect. It makes you less res reliant on the opinions and um, attitudes towards you of other people. You don't need to just see yourself through other people's eyes and for their approval because you are gaining your own self-respect here. So it's sort of like this triple whammy of stuff that is well worth doing. <laughs> and you know what? When you commit to the inner stuff, the other stuff by and large falls into place. I shit you not. The the sibling conflict, the screen time, the fears about them not learning at the same pace as their peers, all of that stuff just kind of becomes something you can hold with lightness and which is really empowering. If something needs to be done there, you are empowered to do it. 
weirdly, as opposed to being like, oh, angsty, gara, this is such a big deal. Oh, that, that space doesn't even really allow you to be who you need to be in that situation. So yeah, this, this stuff has probably the greatest impact on your overall unschooling life than anything else. <laughs> so yeah, we do a lot of this deconditioning belief stuff and self-care stuff uh, in my course Disco, if you haven't already heard about that do take a little look. But before I sign off, I really want to invite you to tell me how you build this inner stuff into your daily life as a home educating parent. Let me know in the comments. I totally understand that this looks different for every single person. So yeah, hit me up. Don't forget to subscribe and if you found this video helpful, please do share it around. Much love and take care.